my name is Lise Colucci and I'm one of the life coaches at queenbeing.com where we help you to discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in toxic relationships. Today we're going to talk about self-discovery after narcissistic abuse, finding yourself again, finding yourself for the first time, and knowing who you are and learning to love yourself. If that sounds good, hit subscribe and we will get started. So let's break it down and take this in smaller steps. First of all, it's really understandable and totally normal to feel like you don't know who you are after narcissistic abuse. The constant devaluing and the gaslighting and the second guessing yourself that comes from toxic abusive relationships with a narcissist can have an impact on how you feel about yourself, what you believe is true about yourself even. So let's talk about some ways that might help you discover who you really are if you're feeling lost. So if you have anyone in your life that's healthy and safe and you feel comfortable around, you can ask them things like what they notice about you, what they see in you and how they experience you in different situations. You can tell them that you're looking to know yourself and to know yourself better and some of their feedback can be helpful. Just do not let people get critical with you. Remember, only ask really safe people this question. Pay attention to how you are in relationships with friends, with coworkers, with strangers, and watch your behaviors and pay attention to the good things about you. Try to remember your dreams that you've had in your life, in your past, things that you've strived for and wanted to do and see and feel. And how do you feel about those things now? Are there things you can try? Is there some excitement you could reignite the flame for? Seek adventure. You don't have to do anything drastic, just tiny adventures if you need to, but seek things that make you curious and feel excited. Do really simple things for yourself and for yourself only. For instance, if you go to the grocery store and go shopping, buy 10 items that make you feel good, things that make you happy. Get to know what you like and enjoy in small ways like that. Try to think of challenging and pushing your comfort zone. And by that, I don't mean to tell you to push your boundaries. What I mean is see if you can learn a little bit about yourself and lean into the adventures and do things that help you discover things about yourself. Is there something you've always wanted to do? And so maybe something you said a big no to in your life? Try saying yes to it and see what happens. Just make sure it's something that's safe and you know something that isn't bad for you and something that will benefit your life, of course. Practice mindfulness. Getting into the moment, it can help you. We can talk about mindfulness for a long time, but learning to practice mindfulness through meditation, through taking walks, through just being present to what's happening in the moment around you. This can really help you calm yourself and it can help you see yourself for who you are in that moment and sort of get out of the programming that's in your head. If you like to write, try writing out your timeline or your bio and tell your story and see if you can find a theme that runs through that story that describes who you are and try to paint yourself in the most beautiful light that you can. It's important to know that you can just start anytime. Take some time alone and learn to be in the quiet and the stillness of your own thoughts and your own presence. Learn to look at what's around you and discover how you experience the world and what your thoughts are about things. Sometimes when we're doing this and we're really paying attention to ourselves, we can start to feel like we're not really who we should be or we're not really feeling genuine or authentic or natural, you know what I mean? Sometimes it's like you aren't being yourself in a certain situation. If that makes sense to you, just try and pay attention and relax and see if you can let yourself be more natural. Let yourself be genuine. Stop worrying about what other people think. Try calming the inner critic and calming the voice that's telling you you're wrong, you're not enough, or things like that that have been programmed into you by toxic people. Just let yourself be and, and enjoy the process of kind of the uncomfortableness of it, right? One way to calm the inner critic is to learn to active listen. If you can learn to listen to others, you can start to listen to yourself better. And what I mean by that is listening without the need to respond so quickly, just listening and hearing. Another way to discover who you are is to pay attention to what matters to you. What interests do you have? What things outside of yourself in your own life are important to you? Write them down and start a journal of things that are interesting to you and things that matter. So those are just a few tips and ideas for getting started with discovering yourself after narcissistic abuse. Do you have any thoughts on this or what has helped you to discover yourself? Let me know in the comments below, okay? 
If you need help with anything related to narcissistic abuse, head over to queenbeing.com. We have tons of information over there. And of course, if you need coaching or if you have any questions or would like to talk to me, you can find me in the main description of every video. You guys have a good one and you take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>